And let us use our head and heart on our third topic now. <laughs> <laughs> and that is life issues. Can we hear the question, please? I'm Sister John Mary from the Sisters of Life, a community of women who seek to foster a culture of life in Toronto and throughout North America. We're here at our ministry centre in downtown Toronto. Much of our work involves supporting pregnant women who are alone and need help. We also assist women who have suffered after abortion to heal and regain hope. With 94,000 abortions having been reported in Canada in 2017 alone, we know that this is an issue which impacts a great number of women. However, many people are surprised to learn that Canada hasn't had an abortion law in 30 years. Polls consistently tell us that while Canadians have differing views on abortion, most feel that there should be some restrictions in place, such as banning late-term or sex-selective abortions. However, despite the desire of Canadians for protective restrictions, none of the major political parties want to pass an abortion law. Neither do they seem to want to provide appropriate health care supports to those at the end of life. Most people at the end of life cite pain and loneliness as their primary concerns. We know that palliative care can address these issues, yet only 15% of Canadians receive palliative care in the home, and only a third of Canadians have access to any palliative care at all. Instead, there are many proponents lobbying to expand the criteria to make it easier for Canadians to plan their own deaths. Our Catholic faith views every human life as sacred, made in the image of God. We believe that every person deserves to be upheld, protected, and accompanied towards life-affirming decisions. If elected, how would your party tackle these issues and defend the rights of all Canadians from conception to natural death? Well, thank you, uh, Sister John Mary. Um, one minute each for the uh, debaters. Matthew Green, you're first. Our position on women's reproductive self-determination is clear. And we believe that the right of people afflicted by incurable and painful illnesses to choose to end their lives. We also believe in ensuring that the conscious rights of medical professionals are protected when it comes to medical assistance in dying and in a comprehensive approach to palliative care that improves the end of life across the country. New Democrats passed a motion with an all-party support in 2014 calling for a national palliative care strategy and pushed for its inclusion in the scope of C14. It remains a part of our vision for comprehensive, head-to-toe, universal public health care. Thank you. And now, Francesco, your turn. Thank you, Don. Uh, when it comes to women's reproductive rights, uh, I personally support a woman's right to choose. Every party has taken the same position on that. And from my understanding, no party will be reopening the debate on a woman's right to choose in Canada. And if my understanding is correct, that was also the position taken by Andrew Scheer today on his comments. It was. The focus for myself, for our government, is to give, give women a real choice. The Canada Child Benefit, lifting women out of poverty, education, increasing women's labor force partition rate, participation rates. Let's provide a real choice on this debate. Thank you. David. Thank you. Of all the federal parties, only the People's Party allows its candidates and future MPs to openly discuss and bring forth legislation on any issue of concern to Canadians, including abortion and euthanasia. In our support of freedom of expression and freedom of conscience, we stand alone. Even the federal Conservative Party, at one time the protector of conservative values, has abandoned those values completely. Andrew Scheer, mimicking the words of Justin Trudeau, has repeatedly insisted, quote, he will oppose any attempt by his social conservative backbench to reopen the abortion file. Well, be they candidates or citizens, the People's Party of Canada will not allow the moral convictions of law-abiding Canadians to be censored and outlawed. In fact, 
already colleagues of mine from Red Deer, Alberta, have draft legislation to end third trimester abortion, and they will bring it forward as a private member's bill. Dan Turcott. The law is that a woman has the right to choose, and the concern is that people don't want to see pregnancies terminated. So what should we do? We should go back and look at the root cause, and there are two root causes. One of them are unwanted pregnancies, and the other root cause is a potentially unhealthy pregnancy. And as some of my colleagues have stated, there are ways to mitigate those risks and mitigate those problems. Education for women, education for men so that sexual assaults go down and rapes go down. How about that? Um, we, need, uh, we need access to a universal pharmacare, which is something that we have put forward so that women are able to access birth control measures. But we also need, we also need access to medical care for women in compromised communities. And one of the reasons why is we're talking about voluntary loss of pregnancy, but what about if the baby is ill, or what about if the mother is ill? We could have prevented those with better medical care for those women, and we need to look at those solutions so we can stop it from happening. Garnet. Pope Francis would not be allowed to run as a Liberal or NDP candidate. Catholic organizations helping refugees and the poor have been denied government funding for refusing to endorse the status quo on abortion. Like with St. Thomas More, silence is not enough. Liberals oppose our amendments to their euthanasia law, which would have protected conscience rights. Francesco voted against that. So at the moment, physicians here in Ontario are obliged to refer for abortion and euthanasia. We live in a country where most political parties aren't just pro-choice, but they want to drum those who disagree out of public life, out of professions, and out of government programs. Conservatives will defend freedom of speech and conscience for all, including for legislators. Pro-life candidates are free to run and to speak their mind as long as they win competitive nomination races. And pro-life and pro-choice conservatives have always been united in calling for conscience protection, in opposing the summer jobs values test, and in supporting legislation protecting unborn victims of crime when a pregnant woman is attacked. Thank you very much. But first, uh, let me uh, say, uh, and Garnet, I... Mr. Shearer has said that he's not going to open the abortion yeah. debate, right? So what you were saying does not entirely jibe with him then not opening. Well, uh, you, you can say, I'm sure everybody else will press you on that because they're already nodding. Um, <laughs> but uh, I would say generally, uh, and to Mr. Shearer I would add, uh, if not Garnet, uh, abortion is really probably, I would say, the single biggest issue for most Catholics. And none of you have been able to really give, although Garnet tried valiantly, uh, did not, uh, you haven't given much comfort to the Catholics in the room. And I'm wondering why then any of them should be voting for you. Any of you. All right, I'll let Garnet go first because I picked on him, but uh, short, Garnet, please. Well, I'll start, and but then, I hope I'll be able to respond then, uh, to all David the and things then they Francesco. <laughs> So I, I think folks have to recognize where we are, and I think what, what is critical for our party is that unlike the others, unlike the other major parties, unlike the other parties who will be electing MPs in this election, we will stand for people's fundamental rights to express themselves. We will protect freedom of conscience. And of course, our party leader has said that we will focus on issues that unite us, but individual members of parliament can be pro-life, can speak about being pro-life, can speak at the March for Life, can, can express their points of view. And those freedoms, not just for MPs, but also for civil society, so that if you run a, a Catholic charity, you don't have to check a box saying you're pro-choice before you can access that funding. No, we no, need to protect I, that I, space I go, I for civil society, back. and we will do that. I want to go back to the parties and the votes. And as I understand it, and this may have changed, because as the campaign goes on, things do. But uh, Mr. Shear, I thought, would allow private members' bills on abortion, but he wouldn't allow them to come to votes in the House of Commons, which is kind of like having your cake no, and eating no, that's, it too. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Don, but that, that's not the case at all. Further, it's not even so, within the so, power of the so, leader so to prevent you, a vote you, from you coming. You can introduce uh, an abortion bill, uh, banning abortions or third trimester or whatever, 
And if it was a private member's bill and it made its way through the process, which isn't all that easy, as you know, but if it did, it could come to a vote in the House, and would it be an unwhipped conservative vote? Our party policy is clear, and our leader has been clear. Members are free to put forward clear. legislation, and I'm going to finish what I say, sir. And if you learn more about our policy, you might have stayed with us, because our party <laughs> is committed to freedom of conscience for its members and protecting it for everyone. So there will be a free vote for every member of our caucus if that issue is everyone, as has always been in the, case, the case and as has been our party policy since the party was founded. Uh, Don, if, if, I, if I understood, and I think if Garnett was dancing, he'd be getting an A-plus right now, uh, <laughs> dancing around the issue. Uh, Dar Garnett, are you saying you would reopen the, the abortion debate in Canada, yes or no? I think you just said yes, Garnet. Garnet. Well, our, our leader has been clear that a Conservative government will not reopen the issue and that individual members of Parliament will have their freedom of conscience protected. I, I think that's very clear, uh, that, that, that members are I, able to di speak. Directly contradicts what you just said about two minutes ago. No. No, it, it doesn't at all. A Conservative government will not reopen the issue and individual members of Parliament will be free to be pro-life, to speak about their perspective on that issue and to advocate as they wish. Okay. Matthew, Matthew. Well, I think yeah. this is a great example of how we can foster respect of respectful dialogue. And I think that part of the issues, is I actually reject the premise of your statement that Catholics will only uh, vote on this one issue alone. We've, we've talked about many issues. And I believe that we're in a systems failure right now because we had the opportunity to provide for democratic reform in this country. It was something that the Liberals ran on repeatedly. And it's my belief that if we had run on democratic reform, then we wouldn't be looking for the wedge issues that would allow 38% of the population to have 100% of the power or to allow the rise of right-wing rhetoric to kind of take this populist bent. And so, you know, my question is to my friend from the Liberal Party, with all of the promises that you gave in 2015 that could have perhaps uh, gotten you out of this conversation tonight, uh, would you be willing to stick to your word and, and actually uh, reintroduce electoral reform so that we don't get caught in these wedge issues? Well, you may hear from him in a moment, but uh, David, you have the floor. Oh, thank you, Don. We keep hearing my rhetoric categorized as right wing. It used to be just called conservative values. And I, I fear that if we continue to allow ourselves to be characterized as some kind of demonic force simply because we have moral convictions that are at odds with the dominant political elites, we will lose our voice completely. Related to Andrew Scheer and the clarity or not, if he is clear, he really should begin suing all of the newspapers that are printing his words that say he is just not going to open this issue and to be fair, I don't know what your position is, pro-life or pro-choice, but the truth of the matter is, if you are fair-minded, you will see that people of different views from yourself should be able to voice their opinion without discrimination. And that is what my party is for. And that is why my party allows free votes. And that is why my party allows us to bring forward legislation on moral convictions that are important to our constituents. So where were the moral convictions of the leader of your party who was a conservative for all of these years and only had a coming to Jesus moment when he lost the leadership? Okay, 30 seconds to Garnet. You act like Garnet. he's brand no. new. Thank 30 you. 30 seconds I, to Garnet, and then we're moving on. Uh, can, may I? Thank you. 30 seconds. Okay. You know, I, I, I think this is where we need to calm things down a little bit and stop talking about how terrible each other's leaders are and actually judge this through compassion. Let's think about the actual women that we're talking about. So if the laws are in place, what can we do to help the women? And what we need to help those women. We need to promote their health and their safety and their education so that they don't end up in broken situations. We've got to stop with this craziness and start looking out for the people of Canada. Yes, yes, and we, need to, and we need to reduce those abortions by looking out for those, for those women and for the health and safety of the women and those children. That was, yes. that, that was a very, no, excuse me, time is up.